dictionary definition of music is the art of arranging sounds in time through the elements of melody, harmony, rhythm, and timbre. Low Pass Filter is a show about the nature of this thing we call music, how it functions in people's lives, how it's contextualized by society, and why we find certain music meaningful. This is Low Pass Filter. Hello and welcome to Low Pass Filter. This is a show about music and what it means in our lives. Uh, my name is Mateo Noche. I'm here with uh, Low Pass Filter co-host, Bandon Wayne, welcome Bandon. Hello, welcome back. Welcome, welcome me. Another... Welcome us. Thank you so much. Yeah, another <laughs> another fun show. So, as regular viewers know, uh, we switch back and forth on topics every month, uh, and this time, this month, it is your your topic. So, what is your topic for today? Well, it is a topic that I felt like it was high time we we brought it up. What is funk? Let's talk about funk. Let's get into funk. <laughs> and uh, funk it up on this topic. Well, I guess we probably should say that you know we got there. Are, there are two white guys uh, talking about <laughs> funk, <laughs> and uh, the way I look at it uh, is uh, like I'm, I'm a dilettante, you know. Sure. Uh, I know what I like. I don't necessarily know what it is, but I, I mean, I yeah. know what moves yeah. me, yeah. and I, I know what's <laughs> what's moved me all these all these different years. I suspect you probably have some funk in your in your soul. I, you I, know. But you know, I like to think so. You feel the funk. I, yeah. I do feel yeah. it. Yeah. I do feel yeah. it. But uh, uh, we don't hold ourselves out as experts. No, generally not. I mean, uh, yeah, enthusiast. I don't like to call myself an expert on anything. Right. You know, but but we're we're music nerds. Yes. So we like to deep dive and in, into these different uh, musical genres and whatnot. Um, well, I think, uh, as always, we should probably define terms. Uh, so funk is uh, African-American uh, music form, started out in the mid-1960s, mixture of soul, jazz, R&B, uh, de-emphasizing the melody and chord progressions and fo focusing on a strong rhythmic groove uh, and with a lot of bass line and a lot of drums and also uses extended chords. For you musicians out there, like 13 flat sevens or flat nines. Yes, yeah. Not knowing music theory, I, I in my research, uh, I saw a reference to that and I went, yeah, okay, I love that is what it is. I, chords are, they're <laughs> I delicious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know that theory, but it uh, made sense to me. There's yeah. uh, some complex stuff going on in there. And of course, uh, why is it called funk? And I can tell you. I'm going to tell you right please now. Please do. Please do. Uh, uh, well, funk uh, originally the word refers to a strong order, uh, odor. <laughs> yeah. Not an order, yeah. but an odor. And uh, so you know, you will often uh, hear funk musicians say, uh, "Put some stank in it." Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> and so uh, that's where it is. You got the stanky, yeah, funk yeah. notes. Yeah, that's a fun, fun aspect of it. Uh, you know, sometimes when, when the music is real funky or it's got a real strong groove, you might say it's nasty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like the idea that we have terms like this that we, we kind of grew up with or we've known for a long time and we just kind of accept it as the term. Uh, and so it becomes something that we just kind of innately or inexplicably understand. It's funky. Yeah. It's got funk to it, you know? Well, you know, the thing about funk is all roads lead to James Brown. Lead to or from. Or from, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so he, he gives other people credit for uh, coming up with the feeling, and yeah. the, the funk feeling. Uh, but uh, he really developed a signature groove. Uh, and as we were talking about that before, I think before we started, with the emphasis on the downbeat. Mm -hmm. In other words, on the one. Yeah. And uh, you'll hear him uh, call that out uh, in many, many songs. Yeah. 
Um, and so what we're talking about is the first beat of every measure, emphasis on the first beat of every measure, and with swung 16th notes, uh, kick sounds on the first two beats, and then answered by off beats by the snare. Yeah. Uh, so that is kind of the, the, the yeah. James Brown funk sound. And that part of it's referred to as syncopation. The funk groove has a lot of syncopation in there. Uh, yeah. But always really strong on the on the one or the the first downbeat. Like for example, reggae is on the two. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's a, that's a different a different feel. Which can still feel funky in its own way. It but, can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, that specific uh, sort of core element to it. Uh, but there's something else, maybe more just the stank. The stink. It's just something <laughs> innate in it that that uh, you can't help but say that's funky, man. Yeah. Well, and you know, since we're talking about you know emphasis on the bass lines, uh, we should probably talk about a couple of people that really uh, put it out there. I know who, who uh, you're gonna say. I uh, the ones I have uh, collected down here are uh, Bernie Edwards, who's in a band called Chic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, Bootsy Collins. Bootsy, of you can't course. go anywhere without Bootsy. Who played in in James Brown band yeah, and yeah. and also in Parliament, who yeah. we'll talk about in a little while. And then Robert Cool Bell, who was in Cool and the Gang. Yep, yep, yeah. <clears throat> and so you know, uh, these guys kind of developed this repetitive patterns, locked in grooves, and the slapping and popping yes. of uh, a bass sound that. You, but when you're talking you're, about that, then. We have to mention Larry Graham. Larry Graham, yeah. A pioneer of the slap bass style. Um, Graham Central Station, uh, Sly and the yeah. Family Stone. Yeah, came out of Sly and the Family Stone and is credited with inventing the slap. Yeah. I was fortunate <laughs> enough to see Larry Graham uh, playing with Prince. Oh, gee. Uh, which was pretty <laughs> amazing. And Cynthia, uh, the trumpet player from Sly and the Family yep. Stone, was also there. Wow. Also, wow. Carlos Santana. It was a great night. But uh, yeah, I was I, I feel super fortunate, and I think he's I think he has passed on since then. Yeah, um, I, I would sorry, think so. if Larry, if you're if you're still with us, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely towering. Uh, then of course we get move on to the drummers, and a, you can't say a funk without saying Clyde Stubblefield. Clyde Stubblefield, man, um, the most sampled drummer in hip hop. That's right. Perhaps one of the most sampled uh, musicians on yeah. the face of the earth, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Jabo uh, Starks, who also played. These guys both played in James Brown's uh -huh. bands at different times. Yeah, yeah. Um, David Garibaldi, uh, amazing drummer with Tower of Power. Tower of Power, all right. Uh, was kind of also developed this thing called Ghost Notes. Yeah, yeah. And very much into the rim shot uh, kind of uh, flavor of doing the funk thing. And a lot of um, hi hat splash accents. Okay. Another, yeah. Another one of his kind of. Signature. Another guy that you would uh, credit with that uh, kind of ghost note style is Bernard Purdy. Right. Uh, who isn't necessarily associated strictly with funk, but he was a funky drummer for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, George Brown who was Cool in the Gang's yeah. drummer, amazing, amazing drummer. And finally on my list, I have James Diamond Williams, who okay. was in the Ohio Players. Uh, yeah. And we'll oh, talk man. about them later when we get to talking about about our, our, our list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then another kind of, I guess, signature of funk was the uh, uh, chicken scratch, or the uh, kind of chank. Uh, guitar. Yeah, know, yeah. Got put in a lot of that. <clears throat> and of course, Jimmy Nolan, who played with James Brown, was kind of the originator of that, or at least he gets credit for it. Don't write us if there's somebody else that. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that name specifically uh, off the top of my head. Um, he was in the Famous Flames. Okay, he, he, yeah. He played in uh, bands up to the 70s with, with James Brown. Uh, Ernie Isley. Oh, man. Another, another yeah. towering uh, funk guitarist. Um, and then I had uh, uh, Eddie Hazel yeah. from Funkadelic. Yeah, Eddie Hazel 
takes funk into another place. Um, I'm sure it could play some of uh, that funk guitar style, but uh, but was also the, the aspect, or at least a strong component in that psychedelic aspect of, of funkadelic and and uh, you know essentially could play psychedelic guitar like Jimi Hendrix. Oh, yeah. um, so funkadelic while being you know one of the main uh, originators of a real heavy funk sound is also a rock group. Yes. You know. Yeah, I just I have been <clears throat> recently I I I own Maggot Brain on an LP. So my LPs don't get hauled out quite as much, and I finally bought the CD. Yeah, yeah. I know, physical media. I'm an old <laughs> guy. What can I say? Uh, but anyway, I got that out, and I had that like on my CD player for like a week, <laughs> just listening to it. And you're very, you're right. That is a rock record yeah, in yeah. a lot of ways. There's Indeed. a couple of funky songs on it, but it, it's a brilliant yeah. rock record. We're talking about Maggot Brain, 1971. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, you could add uh, "Free Your Mind" and your rear will follow. Yeah. <coughs> and then finally, as long as we're running down the instruments, we I might have well talked about the clavinet. There you go. Oh, yeah. Which uh, is also a signature funk instrument, and I don't think anybody wielded that better than Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. It's interesting. I won't go into the story, but clavinet seems to be coming up a lot in my musical listening these days. Uh, yeah, Stevie Wonder, man. And finally, horns. And nobody did it better than the JB horns. Uh, Maceo Parker and Fred Wesley. Fred Wesley. Fred yeah. Wesley is just like, talk about the stank, you know. I just, I, I could just listen to him play trombone all day yeah. long. It's yeah. just, just, it just goes down so, so well. Uh, yeah, and, and and one thing I love about those guys is I really feel that they were very skilled jazz musicians, and and so they bring a dimension to playing funk, uh, especially the instrumental side of it. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not jazz, it's not funky jazz, it's funk, but there's jazz in there, and oh, yeah. and. Uh, I just love it. Um, and then, you know, think about how that horn section was used in so many public enemy groups, right. you know, like it. So then when you listen to public enemy and you go back to that, those JB horns, you get this, this uh, other perception of what it was they were doing to create these just, just sort of, uh, I don't, I don't know what the best word is, just extremely exciting funk lines you know yeah. yeah well before we get into our list i should just tell everybody out there that you can find our spotify playlist in the description below you can follow along when we talk about these songs if you're not familiar with them or if you just want to hear them again which why wouldn't you yeah. uh you can you can hear what we're talking about so um so Let's get into the list. Let's talk about sure. what, 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 what we have. Sure, and, man. <clears throat> and so why don't you start off? In my, in I, my... I see that we mentioned James Brown. And yeah. I see that you had yeah. a of James Brown to, uh, songs in there. I, uh, I kind of wish I had a more uh, well-rounded list. I, I, I did get some of the most important uh, kind of touchstone artists, but, but like we were talking about before, we started rolling. It's, it's there, there's just so much. It's it's a a, a big world of music, but um, well, you could kind of you could almost like you know uh, throw a dart at the map of James Brown's <laughs> funk, you know, and, and land on something funky. I, I you know exactly yeah. So I, so it looks like I have four James Brown tunes in my Spotify playlist here, but um, you just I just kept wanting to click add. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, what is the best example to pick? It could be. Uh, any number of songs. So, uh, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag was that's cited as a very early uh, important example of uh, James Brown kicking off the funk. 1965. Oh man, yeah. yeah, we're not even to the late 60s, and it was funky as heck. 
Um, and then for me, Papa Don't Take No Mess and, and Get On The Good Foot, were, were, those are songs that to me are just, just funky, stanky funk tunes. And then I threw Funky Drummer in there because that does highlight. The Clyde Stubble feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I likewise, I, I had uh, James Brown. Uh, I picked a couple of uh, late, a couple of later uh, yeah. examples, sort of into the '70s era, and uh, the one uh, that just seemed obvious to me is "Make It Funky." Make It Funky, man. Uh, which had you know Maceo and Fred Wesley and, yeah. uh, on it, and then I'm a greedy man. So, so uh, "Make It Funky" is kind of a slow funk. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm a greedy man is an up tempo, indeed, uh, indeed, funky thing. Uh, but uh, I was talking earlier about you know James Brown uh, saying he wasn't the originator of funk, and he credited uh, a guy named Chuck Connor, who was in the Upsetters, okay, as being the first person to put funk into uh, the rhythm of rock and roll. Interesting. Um, and uh, I think probably his 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 first James Brown's first really funky thing wasn't on my list, but it's, of course it's a great song and it kind of put him on the map was uh, Out of Sight, which was 1964. Okay. Uh, but he kind of had a recipe for, for funk. Yeah. And, uh, he, you know, went on through the years uh, and you could just go on and on the list. I, I, I didn't put these on my list, but I had Cold Sweat, and 67, uh, Mother Popcorn from yeah, 1969. Yeah, I was thinking Mother Popcorn. And Sex Machine. Yeah, yeah. Stay on the scene <laughs> yeah. like a sex machine, you know. Uh, and, yeah, you know, yeah. he what James Brown did, I think, is he, he <coughs> changed the upbeat to the downbeat. Okay. Right? Uh, and really, it's just as simple as that, you know. Yeah. And uh, just... You know, everyone else has kind of followed along in his wake since then. Yeah. Uh, I would think the Isley Brothers have to be early important group. Um, I put the Meters in there as an as a important early group, uh, bringing funkiness. Um, but if you're going back to 64, 65, that's... You know, that's pretty early. Yeah. It starts to get really, really moving. Well, the, the meters the that you had, um, hand clapping song. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, there's a whole different branch of funk, the New Orleans branch of funk. So you've got the Neville Brothers uh, yeah. and the yeah. meters, you know, and they have their own kind of feeling. And, uh, you know, if musicians are in the know, would say, you know, well, we're going to play this New Orleans style. Yeah, right? yeah. And so there's there's a differentiation between that. Yeah. And, and New Orleans has is, is definitely got a history of, of funky music um, going back before funk was even thought of. You know, there's a funkiness to uh, music from that area and, and the culture there. But then Ohio is a hot spot for, for funk. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Yeah. The, the meters are really important to me because I, I feel like they brought something to it that 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 helped define the idea of funk music, even if it was uh, essentially started by James Brown um, and the Isleys too. You know, they were you know a soul R and B group who know had their own funky vibe going on and, and ultimately they became uh big and in, in defining the funky vibe too and, well you had a hand clapping song for the meters i had sissy strut yeah which is just like a textbook funk song it uh, is and if you looked in the dictionary <laughs> you would see the meters playing yeah that yeah i think i put strut. hand clapping song because that one really just that one's always appealed to me um, the groove to that one yeah. Well, this probably seems like a good time to take a little break. Uh, we're going to go away for a minute, and we'll be back with some more low-pass filter.
This is low pass filter, Mateo, Bandon, <laughs> talking about funk. I was looking down at my list. I'm trying to. Yeah. Trying to. Uh, I have my list is not really in any specific. Yeah, order. that's that's I, what I, I was doing. I, I didn't I didn't try and go you know chronologically or anything. It was yeah, just, I apologize. I was scanning it trying to see if there is a chronology to my list, and it's not really there. But anyhow. Yeah, I had uh, and I put average white band in there, uh, who are Scots. <laughs> They're all white. Uh, but the, it, there is an actual soul community, an R&D community in Glasgow and, and, and other spots in, in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was trying to think of this this morning. I didn't get a chance to, to look it up, but there was this really great documentary uh, that about uh, Scottish soul and Scottish... Interesting. Uh, okay. Do you remember that? Do you remember no, you know no. what I'm talking about? Huh. All right. Well, I'll, I'll run it. I'll find out what it is. I'll put it in, in, in cool, here. Cool, cool. So there's actually a tradition uh, of these guys, but pick up the pieces. It's got to be one of the funkiest songs yeah, ever. They do have. Um, they and do on have the, the reissue funk. of the, that uh, uh, album, um, there's a live uh, version that they recorded at Montro that just just slays. It's <laughs> it's amazing. Um, Man, um, so we we can't really get into it but that's intriguing that somehow uh funk got to that area and, and turned on a bunch of people it, it resonated with the yeah. Scots. That's right. <laughs> a wee bit man uh next up i i had uh parliament yeah and parliament or funkadelic or parliament funkadelic which p funk is it p funk later yeah. was truncated to to uh which was sort of a collective of, of members of Parliament yeah, and yeah. Funkadelic and kind of all revolved around George Clinton. Yeah. Uh, Bootsy Collins, of course, uh, in the band at various points. But it was sort of a revolving cast of people. Yeah. Um, so originally called The Parliament. Right. And they were and sort then, of a doo-wop group. Yeah, they? they were coming out of that yeah. R&B and doo-wop world. And then... What happens to George Clinton? He gets turned on. Yeah. Gets together with somebody the 60s like... 60s happen. Yeah, yeah. Gets together with somebody uh, like Eddie Hazel mm -hmm. and kind of comes up with this acid rock funk thing uh, as Funkadelic, only to later return to being called Parliament. Right. <laughs> yeah, I have super groovalistic <laughs> pro funk Sophistication, I think is how I did go. Why did you pick that one? <laughs> uh, it's just an incredibly funky tune. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hard to say, but great, to, easy to listen to off of uh, the Mothership uh, uh, connection. Uh -huh. And then I also had Up for the Downstroke. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also we should mention, you know, Bernie Worrell, who was a, a big part of all that. Oh, uh, yeah. We had Boosie and George and Bernie. Uh, Made up various iterations yeah, of Parliament, yeah. Parliament Funkadelic. And you mentioned Stevie Wonder on the clavinet. Uh, Bernie Worrell is probably a master of all uh, electronic, electric piano stuff, analog synthesizer stuff. Um, he is credited as uh, pioneering and furthering the use of, of analog right. synthesizers. Um, and one, namely, that he employs masterfully into this stuff is the Moog. Right. Um, uh, along with other stuff. ARP 2600s he used, he used the RMI pianos. That, yeah. That's how I yeah. kind of um, had a signature piano sound and a yeah. lot of that stuff. I'm which sure is he an was... early, for those of you who are going, what's an RMI piano? It's a, a early, uh, not a digital piano, but an early electric piano okay. that kind of approached acoustic sound interesting okay. but very distinctive yeah and I'm not positive what he's using he is uh, in the pantheon of, of Moog yeah. experimenters but um, there is a signature Bernie Worrell synthesizer sound in in Funkadelic and Parliament and that you'll also hear on uh, his work with Talking Heads and and some other stuff um, so yeah we talk about the drums and the bass 
kind of being your your foundation of funk at least as far as the that feeling of the groove um but think about what he was doing with keyboards like yeah. it i mean adding that to this concept of funk it's just it's just far out it's like outer space stuff man what else do you have on your list? Well, I, I threw down a few from uh, Funkadelic. Um, a couple of them are off the Cosmic Slop album. And, and uh, you know, some people lean towards Maggot Brain. Some people lean towards Free Your Mind. Um, Cosmic Slop was the one that, that first blew my mind when yeah. I was young. And, and uh, the song Cosmic Slop is just this really heavy, for lack of a better word, cosmic funk tune. Um, and then Nappy Dugout, it, to me, it has more of this kind of uh, kind of down home, comforting feeling to it. Um, and then Hit It and Quit It off of uh, Mega Brain just seemed like a real, um, just you know, just real kind of funk stomper. Um, but then we mentioned you mentioned uh, Cool in the Gang, um, and I don't always think of them as being an early funk foundational funk group because they they kind of had like some of these artists had more than one sort of era or iteration of the group um, and so they had you know uh, later 70s pop hits and, and stuff but um, Jungle Boogie just seemed like kind of a uh, a good song to jump off from with those guys um, I had I also had them on my list and I had uh, um Funky stuff. Okay. Yeah. Parts one yeah. and two, and then yeah. the other one song that it just gets me all the time is Hollywood Swingin'. Oh man. Yeah. Which is yeah. just like amazing. Yeah. Um, funky stuff is great, and uh, and I do love Hollywood Swingin' too. Yeah. Those are singles I have in my collection. Yep. In fact, I have the forty-five Funky Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Part one. Flip it over. Mm -hmm. Part two. And uh, hey, man, maybe maybe for a brief moment, talk about the part one and part two in in the world of of funk. Right. Trying to release those singles when you've got a five six minute funk jam. Yeah. And, and you're James Brown. To three and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah. And James Brown was the master of part one and part two. I think. You and know. part three, <laughs> four, and five. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. And uh, and sometimes uh, the A side to one of those singles might have. A little bit more vocal phrasing and the b-side might be a little bit more of the instrumental with just a couple of james brown's signature you know grunts on it as he called it yeah you know <laughs> oh man i threw down brick house by commodores okay that's pretty classic not not uh early funk but um that's a song that would be on any classic funk compilation and have to talk about Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't put them on the list, uh, but really, I figured that they would come up because they're uh, progenitors. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. they're they're right there. Uh, yeah. And Sly Stone was a genius, a crazy oh, man. crazy yeah. genius. Yeah. It still is. Hey, Sly. It's still <laughs> out there. Indeed. I uh, wish he was still making music. Uh, but yeah, uh, so you had uh, thank you for letting me be myself. Yeah, yeah, I go to that song all the time, and there's there's plenty of other great ones, um, and maybe some of their uh, impact on music wasn't only about being a funk group. You know, um, they were very significant during uh, um, psychedelic era, era, the the uh, Vietnam protest era, which is all the same time frame, but um, they touched. They touch people and the musical landscape in, in multiple ways, but like we talked about, Larry Graham on bass, uh, foundational in, in the feel of funk. Um, and they were also an interracial band, yeah, which indeed. was uh, yeah. not yeah. a thing. At Their the funky time. drummer was yeah. a white guy, right? Who kept it, it, it funky? Just, you know, it was either people we talked about. We talked about pigeonholes in the past yeah. and putting one of pe put people in baskets. But Sly did not want to yeah. uh, be in a basket. <laughs> he wanted. Well, to... and they were out of the Bay Area. Yeah. And and uh, Tower Power was out of the same area, yeah. and they were also multiracial. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah. But at the time, it was remarkable. Uh, 
I just know Sly uh, as, you know, from my childhood, and just being on the radio all the time, yeah. and just like hot fun in the summertime, uh, just really, you know, that that was my summertime song. That's and great. Really yeah. evocative of, when Dance I hear it now the on the radio, yeah. Yeah. it's very evocative of getting out of school and oh, okay. getting off, <laughs> you know. Nice. I wish I would have had Sly in that era. Well, yeah. I could have, but. We were probably listening to Guns N' Roses or something. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, dance to the music. Yeah, Sly's music transcends, as do do most of these artists, but um, they're important in the in the history of funk, but yet uh, transcend it. Thank you for letting me be myself again. That just that song really connects with me. Um, to me, it's about you know. Uh, reveling in in the, the space that, that you may have to uh, to just express yourself however you want and be yeah. grateful for the life you have. A lot of joy in that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of joy. And if you ever watched a live clip of them playing that, uh, we, won't, we won't go into Sly's uh, predilection for for uh, things to affect his mood, um, but he just is in his own. Um, smiling, playing his little funky guitar on that, and um, and I just I've gone back to that clip on YouTube so many times. Well, there's multiple ones, but uh, um, I don't know what it is. Just seeing him play that song, I want to thank you yeah. for letting me be myself again. I had uh, on on my list. I had a couple of people. You mentioned people in different eras, and so I I had the Bar Caves. Oh man. Yeah. Which were well, Otis Redding's backing band, and most of them died in the airplane crash. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple of guys. One guy was on another plane, and another guy was ill or something, and was not on the plane. Yeah. And so uh, they had their whole uh, career backing Otis, and then they were reformed uh, in '76 and yeah. had a, went on to have a whole other funk career. Yeah, uh, and they ended up. Um, <clears throat> Kind of taking funk into this new, uh, uh, more synth-driven era yes. that, that I like to refer to as electro funk. Yeah, Larry Dodson uh, became the leader of the band in 1976, uh, and a song I had was something called "Boogie Bodyland." All right, all right. Uh, just always liked the, the feel of that um, war. The Cisco Kid. Yeah, did, did I put uh, did I not put War on my list? I I think I yeah okay I left them off. Yeah, unintentionally. Um, yeah, well, what War song would I put? Cisco Kid. That's a great example. Yeah. Um, some people might even uh, just go to to Lowrider because it's just kicks in with that. Slipping into darkness. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there's just so many great songs, and they had that. Very interesting sound, which was kind of a combination between harmonica. They, they had this thing going with the harmonica and uh, the tenor sax. We play the same notes, oh, doing good. unison thing. Interesting, and, yeah. And a lot of it. Very, very distinctive. And, uh, why can't we be friends? Uh, and they also brought in um, some kind of uh, more Afro Latin yeah. flavor to it. Um, and another group that, that did that really well was. Um, a group called Mandrill, which I didn't put on the list. They're a little bit deeper, um, uh, you know, into the overall uh, discussion of, of funk music. But um, yeah, War. Got to talk about War, of course. Um, who then also teamed up with Aaron Burden from the Animals and right. did this amazing uh, spill the wine. Yeah, kind of, uh, you know, kind of a. They created their own new vibe with, with him. Um, I had, uh, let's see, um, I had uh, the Beastie Boys. I know. All right, all right, I, I all know. right. Uh, but I just, there's one song in particular that is particularly funky called Shake Your Rump. Yes, that off is. Off of Paul's Boutique. Um, and you can tell by who they sampled for that song. Uh, uh, they sampled some very funky people uh, like Foxy. And uh, 
you know, the Sugar Hill Gang yeah. uh, got sampled. The B-Boys uh, are in that song. Uh, but there's there's a Moog line in there. It's just the funkiest yeah. thing that ever ever got recorded. Uh, and I understood they paid like a quarter of a million dollars for samples uh, to for that record uh, alone. Um, and wow. you basically couldn't make that record now. Uh, no, and that's interesting because there were other artists at the same time sampling who didn't pay up front. Yeah. And it really hurt them pretty badly. Well, there's a famous case, and I, I'm blanking on who, who filed it, somebody we'd all know, uh, that changed the, that whole thing. And that made it so yeah. um, you had to clear things first, yeah. you had to pay for them first. I'm not sure what the uh, the one, if there is one case that, that did that, but I know uh, De La Soul got sued by the Turtles. Um, and there was probably a lot more of that. I think once that started, then it probably snowballed. Yeah. Um, probably a lot of lawyers calling up record labels. <laughs> right. Um, hey, anybody you want to sue? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah, I mean, hip-hop uh, probably would not exist without sampling funk music yeah. right yeah well I, there's I I think there's you know Clyde Stubblefield yeah it's all yeah. over so yeah. many hip hop records he was Beastie Boy records yeah he was and um, interestingly he seemed to be really good natured about it specifically uh, knowing that he didn't see a, a dime for most of that usage of this stuff, but he just kind of seemed to look at it like, well, I influenced this stuff, right. but people, you know, without me, this wouldn't have been happening, but I'll just take that, and, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, the Beastie Boys on Paul's Boutique, uh, a mosaic of samples. Right. <laughs> the most ardu arduous production of um, sampling music ever, but it worked to brilliant effect. Um, yeah, so you went a little farther. I kind of hung around the, the 60s and early 70s. Yeah. What, what other kind of far out funk examples you got in there? Well, I had, uh, we talked about the Isleys and Ernie Isley, uh, Ernie Isley, and I had That Lady, parts one and two. Okay. Also had that 45. Nice. Uh, which uh, Ernie kind of pioneered using the Muton, Mutron phase shifter okay and so that's a very uh, signature guitar sound for him in that song especially uh but then i had prince yeah yeah uh, let's work off of the controversy oh. uh record which is a pretty funky record actually and uh, not that yeah. all of prince's records weren't funky but that that one was uh, resonated with me yeah um, prince was funky yeah at some point i think he talked about that in his music um, my name is Prince <laughs> um, but he was so brilliant at, at blending funk rock but but funk and pop making uh, very uh, commercially popular pop music but having that having that funk injection in there that funk basis yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah. Uh, the dude could dance like James Brown. Yes, he, he could. could. He could yeah. play like Jimi Hendrix On and Eddie Hazel. High heels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I saw him at the O, uh, like I don't know, like two years before he yeah. passed away, and it, it is like in the top three concerts that I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Carlos Santana uh, jumped up and did the most un-Carlos Santana solo I've wow, ever seen. Wow. <laughs> he did like this noise solo in one of the songs, which, I mean, Carlos Santana, just, you know, he has this very signature way of playing guitar that, yeah. in my opinion, hasn't evolved much since the 1960s, but fair enough. Uh, can't argue with success. He, uh, and it was just like, who, you know, how did Prince coax that out of him? And Prince did a lot of coaxing, uh, great performances out of a lot of different 
types of people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what a huge towering figure in music and uh, and what a loss to the world uh, to not have him anymore. Yeah. Uh, I'll take. Well, I'll give one more, and then we'll take a quick break. Uh, Rufus and Chaka Khan. Yes, Tell indeed. me something good. Um, was very funky, and uh, Rufus, of course, was a, uh, Rufus Thomas, yeah. a very funky man. And that's an interesting group because uh, Shaka gets referred to as the Queen of Funk. Right. Uh, They were a group together. It wasn't as if she was, uh, you know, a guest or, or uh, a, apart from them in, in status necessarily. Of course, she went on to a solo career. But Rufus as a band was incredible. Just yeah. great musicianship. Also a, a multiracial group. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, very important funk group who, who also could take it into the mainstream, into the world of popular music. Um, also uh, could could fit into the disco realm as well. Um, but, and rock, you know, they're, they're brilliant. Uh, I happen to be a huge Chaka Khan fan, so. Yeah, I mean, I Every Rufus and Chaka Khan, and then solo Chaka records, I have all those, yeah. All right, well, we're gonna take another Quick break, you're watching Low Pass Filter. We're gonna go away for a minute and we'll be right back. talking about funk bring on the funk make it funky make it funky uh, I think that was a song you cited yeah you had uh, Marvin Gaye yeah um, not somebody I associate as much with the world of funk but um, he certainly could have some some funkiness laid down and uh, I put the song got to give it up um, Another example, uh, a soundtrack he did called Trouble Man. Oh, yeah. That's got some some heavy funk vibes. and Atmospheric. Uh, atmospheric. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Yeah. And I think Marvin would be a good example, although, you know, most of these artists uh, from the 60s and, and early 70s were also coming from a place of a new black consciousness of, of that era, um, post-civil rights and Vietnam was happening. And, and so I think Marvin really um, is in that mix of uh, making music that was specifically expressing a lot of uh, what was going on uh, culturally at that time. And, and um, so there's, there's, you know, where you have like, Parliament, or uh, <clears throat> the Beaters, maybe even, or, or the Isley Brothers, you get like a lot of uh, upbeat, joyful, happy funk. A lot of Marvin, Marvin Gaye's funkiness was in the kind of heavier social commentary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think he's good to have in. And then, uh, then we mentioned, kind of alluded to earlier in the show, was Stevie Wonder, yeah. who, you know, his first four albums, we've talked about this before, 
are just seminal. Yeah. Not that he didn't go on and do good things later, but uh, and it was great. It's little Stevie Wonder before yeah, he. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before so we're he, talking about the the adult Stevie Wonder. Right. We're talking as about he, as he grew up out of the, Stevie yeah, Wonder. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> Inner Visions, uh, Music of My Mind. Uh, the other, what's the other two? Man, there's. Uh, uh, songs in the key of life right. that's a big one yeah. uh, talking book yep talking book yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of funkiness in there a lot of that covenant uh, yeah. stuff happening and he was doing it all himself <laughs> really with the you know he had some backup singers but he was playing the drums he was yeah. playing the guitar yeah. he was playing the keyboards he was playing the bass he had musicians there to work with and certainly when he played live and, and stuff you know he, he could only play keyboard and sing but it was known that in the studio he would be he would be laid down all the parts and which Prince kind of took on that yeah, that thing too yeah. as well uh, but there is a, a great clip of, of him in that era with a band playing yeah, some of the songs yeah. and it is so hot yeah it's yeah. just off the charts you know you think of Stevie as kind of sunny and you know fun and, and that sort of thing uh, but it was just like super aggressive you know not in a mean way but just like really leaning into the right. material that's a good way to put it uh, yeah in a way that it, the, the records are genius and they're wonderful but this would the I would have loved to have heard a live album out of some oh. of that stuff of, of him playing um, no with doubt. These musicians I feel like that clip that you're referring to we've we've seen it over the, it's like it's been around for a long time now you just look on YouTube uh, I don't know where I first saw it but isn't it like they're in a, a sound studio yep. kind of room and yeah and that was a good way to put it leaning into it like you know but what happens in that moment where they go this is what what we're doing and then it it, it yeah, just full on. This is the sound. This is the attitude. And, yeah. And they all just came so hard with it. And yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing vapid about Stevie Wonder tunes. I had kind of a. I don't know. They may not be obscure. They're still. They're actually still. I, I was surprised when I went and looked them up. They're still performing. Uh, was a band called Brick. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had a big hit in the United States with a song called Daz. Yep. D A Z Z. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which was hit number three in the pop charts uh, back in 1976. But the song that I uh, that I know is from their self-titled album called Dusik. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is very, very funky yeah. and very. Uh, sunny and upbeat and fun. I don't have that one. I do have uh, the Brick album with Daz in my collection. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's that's one of those tunes that's like it's going to be on a on a top twenty funk collection or something. Something that that uh, like you said got got chart success. And, and, you know, it's easily digestible funk tune, but it's good. Yeah, super good tune. And then I see you had Bootsy. Bootsy yeah, I had Collins. to throw something by Bootsy in there. Bootzilla. I just kind of threw one out there. Um, uh, there are solo Bootsy records, and then Bootsy's been involved in lots of other projects since uh, working with James Brown and, and Funkadelic Did he play Parliament. Did TomTom Club? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, probably. Yeah, been been in other kinds of projects as well. Um, yeah, I threw Superstition by Stevie Wonder, but there's mm -hmm. a number of other tunes. And yeah, I think I think that's everything on my list. Oh, um, Curtis Mayfield. Yes. You know, coming out of uh, he, he goes back to the doo wop and R and B era, um, but uh, he could get funky. Yeah. I, I snuck one on. You probably didn't see this. I, just, I oh, did you add? I, it? I put one. I had to put them on because I just forgot about them completely. But Charles Wright and the one oh, three Third Street nice. Watchman, yeah. uh, 
was, I, I have, somebody made me a dub of the record, I don't even have the, the art or anything to it, but I just love that record. Um, yeah, they made a lot of records, but this one in particular had the semi, semi hit, which I can't remember right now, but I will put they it. They do Express Yourself. Yeah, Express Yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. great stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then Carl Douglas. Okay. Kung Fu yeah, Fighting. Yeah. <laughs> I love that too. Yeah. Good stuff. And, you know, as you move into the more modern era, then you have people like Herbie Hancock. Yeah, I thought about Head, Herbie. Headhunters. The Headhunters album. Yeah. Um, I thought about him because uh, I, I think somehow with what the Headhunters did, um, also, kind of like Bernie Worrell, his his experimentation with with synthesizers um, had to have a, a significant impact on funk music. Um, I just I think of them as modern funk. I mean, yeah, know, except, the 60s, except what does that go back? Headhunters goes back to what seventy three, seventy four, or something. Like that. Yeah. Goes back pretty far. But then when you take uh, his album. Um, uh, this is a drop. Sure. Yeah. I was trying to think of the one that's titled after uh, a Curtis Mayfield song. It's the one with um, Rocket on it. Uh, Future Shock. Oh, right. Yeah, on Future right. Shock. That's very funky stuff. Yeah. Uh, Rocket was the big hit that everybody heard, had an yeah. MTV video, but the rest of the album is this kind of, what well, was called Future Shock, but it's really kind of like future funk. And, you know, there's so many subgenres of funk. So there's synth funk, funk rock, new funk, avant funk. We okay. should have put that in the art, in the art <laughs> show. Uh, boogie, electro funk, funk metal, <laughs> G funk, which is kind of rap and funk, <coughs> and timba funk. I don't know what timba funk I, is. I Never think it's like kind of Latin funk music. So okay, okay, yeah, kind yeah. Of referring to timbal, I, I see. Funk with I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, um, G funk. That would uh, that's actually uh, descended from the Gap band and this right. West Coast funk style that that uh, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube adopted yeah. into their sound. Snoop Dogg. So yeah. Any final thoughts about funk? Man, Besides uh, go out and listen to some funk? Definitely go out and listen to some funk. Uh, I, I feel like my demeanor this morning is kind of betraying my, my actual deep interest in funk music. I listen to it all the time. Uh, um, I, I play my funk records all the time. <laughs> uh, but maybe, I, maybe I, I, I don't feel cool enough to like fully represent what funk is. Yeah, no, we're definitely so, not cool yeah. enough. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> deeply love it, and um, when that music connects with you, it, and when you're listening to it, it just feels like nothing gets better. Right. Nothing can make you feel as joyful. Uh, nothing makes you feel like you want to dance as much as good funk music. Um, so, yeah, hopefully our lists will inspire some further listening and, and investigation and uh yeah maybe maybe at some point we'll do a funk part two down the road could be there's a lot there's a lot to uh, funk to be mine well come to the end of another one i want to thank everybody for listening and to watching to low cost filter uh if you be sure and like and subscribe to our channel uh and uh, if you have comments you can get all of us at uh that's filter 2020 at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time on Low Pass Filter. Thanks for watching Low Pass Filter. at lowpassfilter2020 at gmail.com. 
Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified about future shows. Thank you.